Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Well, Scott sent me another beauty that he found at a flea market. This is the Daiwa GS Gold Series 90 three ball bearing reel. This one dates to about the 1980s. So we're working on a reel that's approximately 40 years old, 35 to 40 years old. I was able to find an advertisement for that and uh, it was featured on the bottom here. But unfortunately the ad is not dated. Uh, this might have actually been the catalog page, but again, I don't have the actual date on it. I do know that the GS90 replaced the GS9, and uh, well, this one is suffering from what I call uh, grease choke. It's just, uh, if you try to turn this wheel with the handle, it, it just can't do it. But if you do turn the rotor, you will notice that the handle does turn, which usually means that the reel is complete, but uh, well, there's something just choking it or and that would be old dried grease. We're going to find that out. This is a beautiful reel. We're going to take uh, care to service this. We'll explain a little bit about it. And if you like these types of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. That way you'll see the videos that I'm posting and you'll be able to see how to service them. And if maybe if you're looking for one, you'll see how that um, reel is made and uh, it'll give you an idea if that's uh, something that you want to go purchase or pursue. I start by removing the exterior parts. The first part is the spool and the uh, drag adjuster knob. And well, those go off to the side. We'll get to them later. This is one of these reels that it has the handle held in by a side screw. So if you find yourself with a cap on this side and it's not moving, of course this isn't moving, but if the cap is not moving, generally it means that there's a through screw or a through shaft there. And even sometimes if you find it moving, it doesn't hurt to check that. <clears throat> Last thing you want to do is try to, to crank this uh, to remove it and uh, find that you break it off. Well, there's a screw here, so let's go ahead and take that handle off while we are at it. A couple of things while I'm doing this. I wear a protective glove that just kind of keeps some greases and oils off my hands. I come in contact with a lot of that stuff and I'm never quite sure quite what is in there in addition to the greases and oils. So I like to, to keep that off as, as I can. And uh, well, the other thing that you'll find is I use a parts tray and I take pictures and I recommend that for everybody. This is our little uh, kind of a plug. It's going to hold uh, steady into the main gear. This is the screw that's going to go into that. When I take those pieces off, I put them into a parts tray and uh, that way they don't get lost along the way. This uh, has a uh, lower gear set that you can access by removing the three screws. Those three screws can be used with a flat bladed screwdriver or you can use them with the uh, Phillips head screwdriver. I prefer a Phillips head screwdriver. It's just easier to grab the tracks on it. This one happens to be a number two uh, Phillips head, but uh, you could use a number one. They both work. Whatever you do, make sure that you match the threads on the screws to the tool that you are using. If you undersize the tool, you have a risk of butterflying the, uh, the slots. And if that happens, well, you may not be able to get it back out or get it in either way. All right, the three screws are out. We should be able to pull up and out on the side plate. This is where I think we're going to find an awful lot of glue, uh, grease and junk in here. It's just going to make it hard. Yeah, I can just see how badly it is inside. So just be careful with this. It is a metal side plate, as we noted. And generally, it just takes a little bit of well, care. To, uh, to work it up and out. I'm going to just use a, a screwdriver to help me with that. This is a bearing. This bearing surprisingly still works. <laughs> well, here you go. Is there any question as to why this reel is uh, uh, jammed up? It's all the dried grease and dirt and the like. Generally what I like to do when I see a condition like that is just flood the whole channel before I even go any further. Flood that whole channel with a penetrating oil. Let it start doing its job as you continue to work the pieces and parts off to remove them to do the cleaning. There is a screw on the bottom of the crosswind block here that's holding the axle shaft in place. That's the next piece that we're going to remove. We're going to hope to remove it because when you see a lot of greases, 
that are all dried up. Sometimes these things rust. And this, uh, this gear metal is probably what I would call the old pot metal. It's just an alloy. And, well, sometimes those things rust and then screws snap off and then your reel is, well, it's consigned to uh, being a parts reel or being a display piece, but not necessarily being fishing again. Well, we've got that same issue here now. We have an issue where this is locked in place on, uh, on the shaft here. So some of that is dried grease. That's probably sitting on the pinning gear. So we'll go do a squirt with that. And I think we're going to have to try to lever this up now, just like we were levering up the other piece. And a good thing to lever up with is, well, the wrench. And if you run out of space with the wrench, and it's working, which was just going on there, just find yourself another little wrench, and just keep walking it up. Eventually you'll have the hand strength to do it, but these first, first two pieces, this is how you would double up the, the wrench, give yourself a little bit extra room. And it's really not pulling out of the crosswind block the way we would like it to. There's a little bit of a pull, but it hasn't taken it up all of the way yet. So we're going to see if we can sneak in here, kind of help that along. But what you need with this one is you need a lot of patience. But eventually you will succeed. There we go. And you will get it out. And you can see what happened here. Well, you can see some of what happened here. This is why the, <laughs> the reel is jammed. You got some serious dried grease on the axle shaft. And if that happens, well, you're kind of stuck. And that's literally and figuratively you're kind of stuck. So what we need to do is just uh, put a little piece of steel wool here. This is a case where steel wool is going to be the answer to how do you clean this up. It's got a mild abrasion to it. This particular steel wool is a uh, 4-0. It's the finest of the steel wools. In other words, it's a polishing steel wool rather than a cutting one. I'm going to use the pad and a metal polish. This is uh, Turtle Wax Chrome Polish. It's an automotive product. Uh, and I'm just going to see if we can't get that stuff off of the shaft. You can see exactly where the, the reel kind of planted and where, well, it just sat for a very long time by where those, uh, those rust spots are. Okay, I think we come along pretty well. You can see how it does a nice job of just polishing it up, getting the, the old grease off of there. And uh, well, we're good to go now. So much of reel repair is simply taking the reel apart, observing what you uh, can about the condition of the pieces and the parts. So for example, on this main gear, there's a lot of pitting going on in the outside of this. It doesn't matter, that doesn't affect the drive of the reel at all. And uh, well, now we got to do the same thing on this side that we did on the other. We got to work that out of the bearing. You can see that uh, again. There's an accumulation here of a, a lot of dirt, and this is muck, 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 muck. Look at this. It comes off solid. It's almost coming off like uh, flakes. Well, that's certainly not conducive to free spinning on a reel, but it did clean up. And again, you want to check your teeth, make sure that there's no grease trapped in those um, cavities or slots, if you will, in the gear teeth. You can pick it out with a, a pick, or in this case, I'm going to use a little brass brush and I'll pull through on that. You'll notice that I do have that paper towel on my desk. That's to take the dirt and debris out of these pieces, but not let it transfer to other projects by uh, just kind of putting it on my, my table. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. That little gear on the back drives the oscillation gear. And this one has a lot of dried grease in it, so let's 
let's take care of that as well. I'm using the pick to clear the channels. While I do this, I want to encourage you to, to uh, ask questions. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you take pictures, it will help. Now, my pictures are video. You don't need to do the video. Use your um, cell phone camera. Use a digital camera. Use whatever is convenient to you for those pictures. And that way you'll have reference points in terms of how the reel was set up before you started taking it apart. So, of course, you would take it, take a good picture here right now, and so on. And that's going to help you when it's time to reinstall. All right, I think we did pretty good with that one, given what it is. Put that to the side. This is a bearing, and we noticed it is working. So what I'm going to do on this one is just flood this area, again, with some penetrating oil. I don't use the penetrating oil as a lubricant, but I do want to see if I can't get some of that surface rust off of it while it's sitting around here. Next piece off is the crosswind block, and we've got a lot of cleaning up to do on this reel. That's primarily what this service is going to be about. Unfortunately, if any of these pieces and parts are broken, uh, we're going to have a bigger problem because you're not going to be able to find them. As I mentioned, the reel is 40 years old. There are no distributors just simply uh, selling those replacement parts now. At one point in time, they were available. That uh, no longer applies. And, uh, well, I'm trying to see if this is actually has a screw in it or not. It's hard to tell. That may be a screw. All right, so this is a problem in that it is a screw and it's frozen in the case. So this is the first one we, we've actually seen that where that's something that cannot be removed. And you have to make a judgment here. Your judgment really is, do I want to risk breaking it and ruining the reel? Or from the old kind of school of let sleeping dogs lie, I'm not going to see if I can't work around that. And I think the answer to this one is going to be we're going to work around it because I can get most of this case cleaned. Get the old hardened grease out of the way. And I can keep using penetrating oil to flush out the dirty area behind it. As you can see, it's, it's spinning freely. That's what we're most concerned about with an oscillation gear. I need to make sure that it spins freely. Well, there's a lot of cleanup involved in this one. I'm not sure that we need the video running for all of that. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to continue to do exactly what you see me doing here, which is just kind of scraping the side walls, flooding the gears, the oscillation gear here, with some penetrating oil, working it as free as I can. And it's free now, you can see. It's spinning relatively free. That's the way it should operate. So I'm not terribly worried about the bottom behind it. But we're going to just keep doing that to the best that we can for a few minutes. We'll be back uh, very well in video time in no time at all. Well, we're back. We did a good job of cleaning the case. The one thing that does remain is the pitting on the inside of the case. And I do believe that that ad that I uh, showed before said that this is an aluminum case and that would look well much like a uh, an aluminum lounge chair or something that was left out uh, for a long period of time would get that little pitting type of activity. All right we're going to come up top then we're going to continue see if we can't get the top end of this out. I'm going to remove the rotor nut and then the rotor should follow. On the rotor, we have a working side that's right here with the bail. This one is a, a stationary side, has a little bit of salt in it, and we have a line roller. So what I want to do is squirt and make sure that this trips. If it trips, there's no need to remove the bail. And again, it's a manual, not a manual, it's a slam exterior. Uh, it's going to bump up against this guard here to close. So you won't find any spring mechanism or anything inside here that's an internal trip mechanism. That's not on this reel. Okay, let's set that aside. We can actually put that right under our spool. And let's go ahead and see if we can't remove 
these pieces. And again, the, the tough part with this is that the reel has been sitting and you're never quite sure if you're going to be able to remove pieces and parts. I'm going to start by removing the anti-reverse dog screw. This is an old-fashioned finger-jointed anti-reverse dog. That means it's got two fingers like this that are going to grab the anti-reverse click ratchet right here. You can see how it's set up and it's going to work by pulling off against that. Yeah, clean that up a little bit. This one looks like it's in pretty darn good condition. We'll show you how to reset that in a moment. I think we can take a little bit of that steel wool and just kind of buff this out while we're at it. You can see how it just polishes it. It's not abrasive to any extent, but it's just enough to get that old dried grease off the wheel. So the gold series, well, that was the upper end of the silver series. So you'd have like the 7000C was the silver series, and then you would have your gold series, which uh, up level, I believe there was one additional ball bearing in that, and uh, I think that was the difference. There's three screws that are holding our pinion gear shaft on then, we want to remove those next. We should have the gear shaft and we should have a ball bearing on here. I'm not quite sure what the this, this cog is here. It has the steps of a anti-reverse, but the anti-reverse is working on the, the top level, so I'm not sure if this is a shared piece with another reel, or what this may be. But there's nothing coming in contact with the, uh, the cog below here. Right. This, this comes out. I'm putting the three pieces onto my table to make sure that those three screws are the same size. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put them in my parts tray, and we can pull this whole piece up and out. The most important to me is making sure that the bearing is functional. And again, I'm not seeing, it may very well be that this is just plain stuck, and again, that may have to be a decision. Let's see if we can't bring that, we can bring that up, good. All right, so that's just a, some kind of a click mechanism without a clicker. We've got our collar, our ball bearing. We can get this off. We can. And a very much needed for cleaning pinion gear. Let's start there. Again, this is a lot of repetition, but it's the only way that you're going to ensure yourself that the reel will turn free and easily and that you can give it a second chance. There's a lot of work involved in these. So a lot of times I hear somebody, oh, I picked up the reel for $5. How do you think I did? Well, sometimes that $5 reel you need to go buy parts for. A lot of times you can spend an hour or so cleaning. I don't know how much I spent off camera there. But yeah, it takes, it takes a while if you want to do it right. Okay, I'm just finishing picking up now on these grooves. And you can see why the reel wouldn't turn when you turn the handle because there's just so much dried grease in here. The other thing to note, this is likely a steel main gear. It's a pot metal kind of a well, pinion gear, steel pinion gear, pot metal main gear. And uh, well, if we have any kind of complaining going on when we're cranking, it may be that some of the teeth on this got dulled from all of the corrosion and the like. One more little kind of finish up here. 
but overall seems to be in nice condition and only time will tell. All right, we're done with that. There is some debris on this little collar, so this collar is either aluminum or probably aluminum. It didn't rust. Just has the old rust from some of the other pieces here. Surprisingly, our bearings are working. One way to test your bearings is to hold the center and make sure that it rotates. Again, I use the penetrating oil for a cleaner, but I'll use regular oil to, to oil this. This one is shielded, so oil will seep through there. And we can do that right now. Use fishing reel oils and greases as you lubricate your reels. Don't settle for anything less. Okay, we can go ahead and put the bearing back on now. And whatever this was in the carrier. One more piece to do here. That is to clean out the cavity underneath where that has been lodged. And again, we just have a, a whole host of dry grease and a little bit of case corrosion again, but I think we're fine in terms of the actual places where the movement will occur. Okay, all right, I'm satisfied with that. It's never going to be uh, dinner table ready, if you will. You're not going to eat off of this, but this is got some corrosion and some pitting from the aluminum case, but other than that, we're in good condition. All right, let's go about reinstalling then. We're going to take our assembly and we're going to grease that pinion gear that we just spent quite some time getting clear. Again, use fishing reel grease. I'm using pen precision reel grease for this. And it doesn't really matter whose grease you use, but make sure that it's a fishing reel grease. Onto the, the teeth, onto the shaft that's going to rest in that collar inside the case. Make sure that you bring that all the way down. I think that this one over the top it didn't. That's okay, we can remove this. Bolt it in the way it should be bolted in. Bring that in. Notice that there was that flat spot here. Just line the case up. Now get your three screws that hold that little collar on. I'm going to use a micro screwdriver for that. Just need to find the right one. You should keep your tools nearby. You never know when you're going to need them. And uh, well, if you have to put the project down and go search for the tools, it does make it a little bit more difficult to uh, pick that project up. Sometimes you'll forget where you are. You'll have some issues that can be avoided by keeping them within arm's reach. That's not all of them, but I would say the common ones. And micro screwdrivers are among my common tools that are used. I like this one. You're not balancing the, the weight of the tool or anything when you're using one of these. It's only a little Harbor Freight $1.99 set of micro screwdrivers. I have other sets, but uh, when it comes to being a screw starter that is almost always right nearby, something I can use, and something that's very convenient. Collar's on. Now we can put this piece back on. Now we can get our anti-reverse dog and click ratchet. It's going to seat here. Remember, it's going to go seat onto the square there. And we have our tie-down screw goes next. I'm still curious about what that ridged 
tooth gear is underneath there. I guess I'm going to go find a schematic. See what they call it. As I mentioned, sometimes I think what we've got... This is just parts that have been used twice. This is backwards. I have this upside down. <laughs> See? Easy enough to make the mistakes. I was just trying to figure out why... I was headed in the wrong direction with that one. There you go. Lessons learned. All right, that's better. That's where pictures would help. You're gonna. It would have been possible to put that one on upside down or backwards. Then you'd be sitting there trying to figure out why you don't have an anti-reverse or why the reel doesn't spin. And if you didn't have the picture, you might be spending all kinds of time trying to search other things when the answer is right in front of you. Let's put it on backwards. Okay. Next up, we want to take that main gear, get that one greased up again. We did a nice job cleaning that. All those teeth are free of debris. All the channels are there, but I do notice on this one, there is some dulling on the teeth. Now that may just be that you got this softer metal as the main gear going against that steel pinion gear. Well, steel is going to win in that case. Or just general wear from use. Get a good amount of grease onto both drives. This is going to drive the oscillation gear in the back. A little bit of grease onto the piece that will go through that backside bearing. You also want to take a moment here to put grease into the cross wind block. I just have a little piece of grease there in that inner cavity. So let's get that out while we're at it. The only side of the cross wind block that needs the grease is the inner side. The outside of the block doesn't contact anything so it's not needed. Make sure your stud on your oscillation gear is down and place your cross wind block over the oscillation gear. And it doesn't hurt at this point to, to grab your, your grease brush and spread some grease onto the teeth of that oscillation gear even though we were unable to get that out. Bring the main gear in. A light coating of grease onto the shaft of the axle. Now we buffed that so that should go in relatively easy when it's time to put that in. Before we do that we want to take our rotor, put the rotor back on. There's two flat sides on that pinion gear. They correspond with the cavity that's set up on your rotor. Just make sure they mesh and tighten that down by hand first. That'll make sure that it's seated properly. And there is no lockdown screw on this reel. So tighten it up. Lost our cross arm block, that's okay. Let's put it back in. And let's bring that axle shaft down. Now there's a hook on this axle shaft, so it's going to face you as you're going in. And sometimes it doesn't exactly go on square, so just kind of work with that last little piece. Sometimes it's a little difficult to do. Okay, that's how it should be seated now. You have the hole open for the tie-down screw. So let's go ahead and put that tie-down screw in. It's a Phillips head. It's hard to see because of the, the rust that's on that, but it is a Phillips head screw. All right, we're pretty much good with to bringing the inside up to spec. A little bit of grease onto the shaft for that side. 
We've already tested the bearing on this one. It works fine. Let's go ahead and put this back on. I have no question in my mind that this reel is going to work fine. My only question with some of that main gear wear is, is it going to be a very noisy reel or not? When they, uh, when they were new, they were not noisy, but we've seen the wear on that, uh, that main gear. So we'll find out. These are very strong reels, so it wouldn't surprise me if it, uh, if it operated nicely and uh, didn't have that noise. This has got a silent anti-reverse. I forgot to mention that when we were talking about that forked anti-reverse dog, but that doesn't make a click, click, click. When it's spinning, it's disengaged from that click ratchet, so it's not making the, the noise that would be associated with uh, some of the older spinning reels. Problem is, I think the older spinning reels that make that click click have a stronger anti reverse system. Okay, we're all tied in. Light coating of grease onto this shaft. This so it kind of slides in easier on an older reel like this. Bring that in. Back to our screw and our little collar. Well, again, if you're with me this long and you're enjoying the video and you haven't subscribed, I wanted to encourage you to subscribe. To those of you that have subscribed, thank you very much. The descriptions mean a lot to me, and I guess they mean a lot to the way that the channel is recognized within YouTube and, uh, well, ranked or whatever it is that they do there. I've never spent much time chasing down the dynamics of that, but I thank you for your subscription. Before we leave this, we want to make sure that we check out the drag systems up top. There's a pentagon clip in here that's holding the drag stack in place. It's a little re retainer clip. A screwdriver or a pick or something like that will help to pull that out. Let's see what we have in here from a drag stack. Well, we have some old Penetrating oil that I was kind of shooting around in a reel. Let's clean out the cavity. You want to get the dirt out of there. That'll help the, the washers to operate efficiently. And the good news here is we have Teflon washers. Well, they're self-lubricating, so despite all of the other issues that we've had with this reel in terms of it being uh, stubborn and, uh, well, kind of rusted in spots and the like, that didn't happen to your drag washer set. You have a couple of these Teflon washers. They're layered in between metals. You have two metals that have a rectangular section. They go high and low. The one with the opening, the full circle goes in the middle. That's called an eared washer. This is the rectangular one that I was referring to. That goes up top. And this drag set is in good condition. All right, let's just put that clip back in. There's a little groove in that spool that holds that clip. Just rotate it so that it's uh, in the, the grooves. And now we can reinstall the spool. Oh, a little bit of dirt there. Not much. We'll get it out of there. A little drop of oil onto the click mechanism up top here for the beta alarm. Let's go reset this. Nice firm click. Tighten up our star adjuster, make sure those drags hold. They hold and then back it off. Take the pressure off those washers. That will ensure a longer life to them. Last thing I want to do is just clean this up a little bit before we test. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner using pen precision uh, reel cleaner. That'll just take off any of the greases I may have transferred to it while we were doing the cleaning. And uh, let's give it a test now. So this is your, your Daiwa GS90. Look at that. It is making a little bit of noise. Not much. Not much. But what a difference. Now I can turn it by hand. It's free spinning. This reel's got a second chance. There you go. Beautiful uh, operating reel. Scott, you found yourself a beauty. And I, I trust you found it at a good price because it wasn't working. And uh, let's just show you how that bale works. I call it a hammer bale. There's a, a post here. The bottom of your bale is going to come by right there. It's going to hit it and trip it. So there you go. All right. 
To our first responders and essential personnel, fire, police, rescue, everybody dedicated to public service and support, thank you for everything it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. And as you're watching, you're noticing our anti-reverse is nice and strong and installed properly. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing everybody a great day.